Well, this isn't the kind of thing you want to see when you're printing. This means the AMS was unable to retract the filament during a color change, and the flashing red light means it's stuck. The dreaded error says, failed to pull out the filament from the extruder. This usually happens when a cut was successful, but the motor was unable to remove the filament for some reason. This can sometimes be caused by a worn cutting blade or just bad luck. Attempting to unload the filament automatically results in grinding gears and an angry AMS unit. Let's turn the printer off and get into disassembly. You can see here through the Bowden tube that filament is still stuck inside of it, all the way up to the extruder, so it's not an AMS issue. The front cover and fan assembly are magnetically attached to the extruder. It can be gently pulled away. There's a series of three similar Lego style connectors, the top one being the fan connector and the other two for the hot end, but all three should be disconnected. Now we'll unscrew the two bolts holding in the hot end. You can use the large Allen key included with the printer. Once the two screws are out of the way, the nozzle assembly can be pulled down. Now would be an excellent time to remove the Bowden tube to better extract the stuck filament. Unfortunately, in my case, that isn't possible, and both the tube and the filament are firmly attached. Let's continue on the disassembly. We need to remove the extruder. Thankfully, bamboo kept screw sizes consistent throughout the entire device, and there are only three screws to remove. It's important to be careful when working in this area, as there is a fragile ribbon cable that wraps around the front of the Bowden coupler. One screw is to the left, just adjacent to the cutting arm. The second screw is located right below the connectors. The final screw is just behind the cutting arm. It is accessible without removing the cutter, but we will still need to unlatch the arm anyway in order to remove the extruder. This is done with a slightly smaller screw. It doesn't have to be fully removed, just unscrewed until the cutting arm is free to spring open. This is easier if you hold some tension on the arm. Be careful here as well, the cutter is a small razor blade after all. Now the final screw for the extruder can be removed. It's the same length as the other two, so your screw map should be easy to track, but I'll go over that a bit later. Now we need to detach the last small FPC ribbon from the printhead. The entire extruder assembly can now be pulled out and down with the Bowden tube sliding through the retention ring. Since the Bowden is still connected, the working environment is less than ideal, but we can make this work. There are four small silver screws that need to be removed from the transparent plastic block. Two of these hold the actual assembly in, while the other two secure a small daughter PCB. This is one of the filament detection sensors. I'm still completely unable to get the filament loose or extract it, so we'll need to go deeper. Around the back side of the assembly, we'll find four of the larger headed screws securing the main extruder gear. These can be loosened and removed, or in my case, I simply left them in the frame and set it aside. This shows the inner workings of the extruder. There's a grooved gear attached to the white arm, which is tensioned by this spring and screw. The tensioning screw can be loosened completely without removing it. Then the spring can be dropped out. Careful here, the spring has a separate cap piece that's likely to fall off as well. This part may not be necessary, but at this point, I'm going to do a complete disassembly. Now, with absolutely no tension from the gears on the filament, I tried again. Still stuck. Slightly frustrated at this point, I just snapped the filament and removed the sensor body with the Bowden tube attached. I am able to push the filament down and back up, but not out for some reason. By wedging my tweezers into this gap that shows the main extruder gear, I can push the gear out of the body. This also releases the tension arm, which can be set aside. This small fragment is wedged between the entrance and exit of the gear area. The middle part of it is bulged out. I'll angrily remove this piece and show you a close-up of it a little bit later on. And hey, now is as good a time as any to finally uncouple the Bowden tube. Might as well do that. Now, if you haven't been keeping track of how everything fits back together, don't worry, I've got you covered. First, I'll drop in the tensioner arm and slide it to the left a bit. This will help the main gear slide in smoothly and can be aligned later. Now the tension screw and cap. It doesn't matter which direction this fits in, you'll notice that the cap has a small lip that fits inside the spring. The cap goes towards the screw side and should slide right in with a little help. 
In my case, the tension screw was tightened completely, so I'll do that. Now the gear body cap with its four screws can be lined back up and tightened down. I assume these screws are all the same size, though I never removed them from the plastic housing. Now the sensor body can be pushed back into the extruder assembly. I'll tighten the two silver screws that hold it in place. Now the sensor board is wrapped around and fits securely into a small cutout. The last two screws will keep it lined up perfectly. And that's it, the extruder assembly is complete once again. Now the extruder can be pushed back into the print head. Those three shorter black screws can be tightened back into place and we're almost out of the woods and back to printing. The cutting blade will slide into a channel just below the extruder and the small retaining screw can be tightened while tension is applied to the arm. Last but not least, the hot end assembly. While I love the quick change capability of these, I strongly dislike the fact that the wiring ends up crushed by the fan. The last two long black screws will keep it held in place. These need to be pushed all the way in and sometimes upward pressure needs to be put on the hot end to make sure that they're lined up. Onto wiring, I like to route the larger cable harness behind the little retaining clip. This clip could have been made out of something more flexible, but I'm, I'm just nitpicking at this point. These connectors are surprisingly easy to connect incorrectly. They only fit into their respective slot, but some of the connectors are split in a way that allows it to connect half in, half out, so pay attention to make sure it's done properly. Don't forget to reconnect that tiny filament sensor ribbon as well. The smaller one is connected to the middle port. Finally, the hot end fan can be reconnected and the faceplate magnetically snapped back to the print head. Now I'll instruct the printer to retract the filament that's still in the Bowden tube and load another one just to make sure everything's working correctly. Despite looking pretty daunting at first, extruder disassembly isn't terribly difficult. You'd need to follow a similar process when installing the upgraded hardened steel extruder gears when you're printing abrasive materials. Now, as for the cause of this whole mess, this tiny piece of filament somehow got deformed by the gears, resulting in a bulge being formed in the gear area. Because the tensioner arm is spring-loaded, the filament could move between the gears, but it was too thick to pass through the entrance or exit channels. This kind of jam can't safely be overcome without removing the gear mechanism and extracting it like I did in this video. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you're back to printing by now. Let me know in the comments below if this helps you out. Big thanks to my supporters over on Patreon, where you too can become a Taptic team member. And I'll see you next time.